My name is Allie Clinton Smith and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Honor Studies at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. And today I'm going to describe our work with Moleculite, validating the use of their fluorescence imaging device to detect biofilm within an established in vivo model. Um, previous work uh, has described the ability of the Moleculite device to detect bacteria encased within in vitro polymicrobial biofilm. Uh, to do this, we used our um, established in vitro polymicrobial biofilm model containing a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio of Staph aureus, E. coli, and Enterobacter cloacae. Um, one important factor in this work is the supplementation of amino levulinic acid. Uh, this is a required precursor for the exoproduct porphyrins, which um, will fluoresce under certain wavelengths of light and is then detectable with the moleculite device. So our previous work has shown that if you supplement the in vitro polymicrobial model with ALA, that the bacteria are able to uptake the ALA through the EPS matrix of the polymicrobial biofilm, uh, and then that will induce for porphyrin production and then fluorescence, which is then detectable with the moleculite device. And this is important because ALA is able to be taken up through the biofilm matrix, and then the fluorescent signal associated with porphyrin production is then also detectable through the EPS matrix. So the matrix itself doesn't appear to be quenching of any kind of signal. It's also important to note that ALA is readily available in mammalian systems. And so when we uh, look at our in vivo models or even with human patients, the supplementation of ALA is not necessary. Um, we next um, took our polymicrobial in vitro model with the same three species um, with grown without any supplementation of ALA and then and are therefore fluorescent signal negative. We transferred those biofilms onto an auger surface um, onto porphyrin test auger which is a uh, readily available media that actually has supplemented, that is supplemented with ALA. And so um, we monitored the induction of fluorescence um, of the bacteria within the biofilm over a period of three days. And so you can see that um, the bacteria are able to uptake ALA from the external environment, um, which will induce the production of porphyrins and then assist a fluorescent signal, which is then um, detectable with the moleculite device. And it's also worth noting that we have a negative control of chocolate auger, which is um, an ALA negative auger. And so there's no induction. So because there's no ALA, there's no porphyrin, there's no fluorescent signal as detectable with the device. Um, it's also worth noting that as we take the in vitro polymicrobial biofilms um, from their grown environment. Um, and then those biofilms are washed to remove any planktonic cells and then transferred onto the auger surface. Um, one thing that we saw happen is that a lot, some of the liquid volume associated with the biofilm moved away from these biofilm solids and kind of pooled underneath the biofilm. And so that accounts for this halo that we're seeing um, of signal associated with the bacteria kind of pooling around the, the actual solid mass of the biofilm. Um, we next took the same uh, in vitro polymicrobial biofilm model uh, with a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio of Staph aureus, E. coli, and Enterobacter cloacae, and we grew those um, without any presence of ALA and then transferred those into our, um, in vivo poly, our, our in vivo chronic wound model. Uh, this work was done in collaboration with Kendra Rumba at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center. Um, and so what we see here is that um, biofilms without the presence of ALA start out signal negative. And then over the course of four days, you can see that the um, bacteria are able to uptake ALA from the mammalian system, um, which causes the production of porphyrin and then uh, induction of fluorescence, which is then signal positive with the moleculite device. Um, from there, we took the biofilm, uh, we removed 
the offsite dressing and then uh, did a full thickness surgical excision of containing the bacteria uh, and then washed that tissue and saw that there is still some fluorescent red fluorescent signal associated with that post-washed excised tissue. One thing to note is that compared to um, the day four on the back of the mouse, that the signal doesn't appear to be quite as strong as when we excise the tissue away from the mouse uh, and then wash the tissue. Um, that is largely thought to be due to a pretty large amount of the bacterial and biofilm mass uh, remains kind of stuck to that dressing. And so when we remove the dressing, quite a bit of material goes along with the dressing, which we do have images of. Um, those images are not currently shown, um, but we are still able to see a fluorescence positive signal associated with the tissue excised from the mouse post-wash. Um, from the tissue, the ex vivo tissue, we then took sa sent samples out for microbi microbiological identification, which is a proof of principle that the, that the biofilm remains polymicrobial throughout the experiment. And then we also took samples um, down to the um, pathology department and stained them for gram stain, H&E, and a matrix stain called periodic acid shift. Um, these samples um, demonstrate that the bacteria is actually, we are able to see matrix embedded bacteria, which is largely indicative of biofilm formation within an in vivo system. And additionally, we sent tissue samples to uh, the imaging core at Texas Tech for scanning electron microscopy, microscopy. And these data also demonstrate that, you know, we're able to see um, bacterial associated with matrix and therefore um, indicative of biofilm in the in vivo system. And so um, in conclusion, this work demonstrates that the moleculite a uh, fluorescence imaging device is able to detect bacteria, fluorescence from bacteria when that bacteria is encased in a biofilm in an in vivo system. Uh, this work is important um, for clients who are looking to um, disrupt biofilm within a chronic wound through debridement or other mechanical means.